rock and roll. Yeah. So let's, I don't know, 55 yep. to 95 there is yep. 40 years. Man, that was yeah, 20 yeah. years ago. So you've yeah. got 70 years. What does rock mean now? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. what does it mean? Well, so, it's, I know it's definitely harder than ever to, to be heard because it, it, it is like when you were saying, like, rock wasn't popular, it's definitely not popular now, you know. There is a lot of rock bands out there, but they're all under the radar. They're all... um. They're all underground, you know. They're like people always say to me, "Oh, rock's dead." And like, as far as mainstream concerned, yes, but mainstream people don't buy albums; they download it for free. You know, the the people that go to the pubs and the underground sort of like go out looking for it. Yeah. There's every type of genre you want thriving, and there's new and exciting stuff going on. But it's just um, people don't look for it. You know, it's all you know, on their on their YouTube or their on their TV. You know, but if you go out there, there's everything and nothing's dead it's all thriving it's just yeah. in it's in the city or, or or anywhere really it's just you got it's out, outside your land room <laughs> yeah. you know, i've said this before like uh cheese ball cover bands play for four hours so yep. three hours of actual singing yeah 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 we can learn and we always do we learn like yep. five songs a week yeah trying to get the chicks dancing like, yeah the yep. minute one you know they don't dance to that song it's got to go it could mm-hmm. be your favorite song of all time yep so picture that world, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. just whatever. After four years, it was just like, it doesn't matter anymore. We yep. quickly learned songs, like, yep. trying to get the ultimate thing. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And it's amazing, man. Like, you, I, I say, a, a, like a Beatles song yep, yep. still holds up today. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. anything released in the last 10 years just yeah, doesn't. Just, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't. You, yep. you can get people jumping in from, from Mustang Sally, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? From the, from the pokey room. Yeah, it, it's like there's a certain magic to a certain yep. group yep. zone of songs. Yep. Like yep. so, so for you guys, yeah, to be playing rock and roll in a pub down there. I look at your know, tour dates. You got loads oh, of songs, yeah, loads yeah, of gigs yeah, coming yeah. up in yep. great pubs. Yep, yep, yep. Those, that's a particular culture of people. Yeah, yeah, they look right? for it, you know. And, yeah. and you could get a you could get a some band that's playing a bunch of uh, last ten years style stuff, yep. whatever yep. that is. Yeah, <laughs> they simply won't like it because yeah, it won't, yeah, won't yeah. resonate like like the um the basic uh, no well, four it, four of good it, riffs. Even if people, yeah, even if like there is definitely the people that the rock scene that that go out looking for it, and then there's even the people that don't even know like they you know they've heard Nutball Shitty Limits and Mustang Sally a million times in the back of their head. They may not even know who sings those songs, but when they're out and then they hear like a similar groove or a similar formula and vocal style, they're like. Oh, this band rocks, you know, and like they don't even know like they are a rock fan until that point, you know, because all they've sort of listened to is uh, the mainstream radio that does not that steers as far away from rock as possible, you know. But yeah, like I know there's a there's a place we went to last time in um, called Frankie's down in Sydney, and it's on a Sunday night. You can barely walk around in that venue; it is packed out, and it's and these are bands that have never been played on or. They do have, you know, big bands go there. But the night we played there, for instance, the, there was about five bands and none of them had ever seen any mainstream anything, you know. So, you know, social media or, or radio or TV, they're just all under the radar. And that place was like walking around, you know, you're like squeezing through people on a Sunday night. And it, it just, I, like, it's it, if you're in Sydney and you like rock, go there on a Sunday night. That's sort of the... Where is it? Uh, Frankie's... um. Oh, I wouldn't know the street name or anything. I was a, a suburb. Oh, city. Yeah, yeah, right. Smack bang in the city. Yeah. Um, right. like I was in the back seat I drunk. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I still yeah. live there. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know. I was, a, I was a passenger that whole trip. Um, we, <laughs> we, we took a van down, and I, I somehow got out of the driving. But um, right. but yeah, and yeah, it was just amazing. Like I on a Sunday night. Like usually you think a Sunday night gig is gonna be like no one there, but it was just chock a block full of people and. Mm just great rock bands and you're like wow like you know what a scene and then um so yeah we're, we're going back there i think we have sunday june 5th book there and and even brawl beach has um not so much a rock culture but there is a great sunday session um at the brawl beach tavern called sounds of sunday not frankie's pizza by the slice that's the one is it yeah it's the greatest rock and roll venue you have been to like go down there hunter it's, street sydney oh, yeah yeah, okay. yeah it's got like it's got pinball machines that are like got kit like the kiss nice. pinball machine acdc ones you know it's covered in just posters of um you know Finn Lizzy Zeppelin, you know, like the whole place, um, like yeah, it, it's it's just done up really uh, well. It's it's like near uh, it's near Circular Key. Oh no, it's on the way to Circular Key. So yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Or, 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 I, I, yeah. I, that was my first time being in the Sydney, so I was just in the back seat, just sort of like not really. Actually, True, on, yeah. on the way to Sydney, I was like, how long ago was that then? Oh, uh, that was November. Um, yeah. So and we're going back there again. The guy that runs it is an, 
the, the coolest guy. His name's Jordan. Um, I only met him for five minutes, but the five minutes I talked to him left an impression on me for life. Like, he's... Uh, I just felt like I was in a Wayne's World movie. Like, it was just so cool, you know. Like, he has this great room that has it's de- decorated so perfectly for the rock and roll scene. Like, the hard rock sort of scene. not And not the 50s, like, you sort of think of the hot rod diners. But opposite of that, it's more like... I've never been to L.A. or, 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 or America, but like, it kind of reminds me of, like, when you read those rock star biographies and they're like, oh, on Sunset Strip. That's what it sort of, like, reminded me of. Right. And, um... It's great, and the guy that runs it, Jordan, is a great character, and and you know he must be to get the bands and the the the, the environment he created, you know, it, it just shows off like his personality, you know, help put a lot would have put a lot into that building that culture up, and it, it's an amazing venue. We're going back there. The um, I was actually changing strings on the way. That, I remember that now. We'll drive into Frankie's, and we just we played an afternoon gig. Um, Oh, I don't exactly remember. Oh, Padstow. Padstow uh, yeah, in yeah. Sydney. Yeah, we played afternoon there and then we had Frankie's that night. And um, I was changing strings going from Padstow, Padstow, I don't know how Padstow. to pronounce it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to Sydney, uh, to Frankie's. So, um, yeah, we just sort of pulled up and, walk, and you walk downstairs and it is just amazing. It's just a cr- great room and like just decorated so well. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we're going back there. But yeah, neat, mate. I say a lot. See this uh, Ellen Briggs, a comedian here? Yeah. We had this thing going and how uh, it, there's a lot of venues that where, especially in the scene where you are, yep. be it RSLs or yep. well, that sort of yeah, 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 funny yeah. stuff, that yep. it's rare to find a boss that really cares what entertainment he puts yeah, in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he yeah, wants yeah. the style. He's, it's yeah. Frankie's. It's got to yeah, have this music. Yeah, yeah. Because it goes with the pictures on the damn wall. Yeah, it's got to yeah. have this and they got to get along with me and yeah. we, everything's got to be cool. Even, that's, even, that's the bar, even the bar stuff, I'm, I'm sure he like, uh, he must, uh, I don't know the process of getting a job there, but like we even walk into the bar stuff and it's like, they've all got this great, cool, like, uh, they just, they're all right. great characters. They're it's no, the yeah, they're all on, yeah, it's just. It's good to know. Because when I was a kid, man, I used to, I'd see like a Las Vegas movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, the yeah. movies were. I was like, yeah, hey, you want to do a club for my club? <laughs> you know, you guys are just going to pass yeah. that test to get in. Yeah, yeah. It turns out it's the opposite. It's like, yeah. Whatever, dude, just put, set up over there. Yeah, and, yeah, know. yeah. No one cares. And um, yeah, like, Oh, well, I mean, it's good because it gives bands a chance to, to break into, like, a live scene. But in saying that, you know, having, like, a punk band play this certain venue that, you know, is cooking meals at that time and, you know, it's not people that don't necessarily want to listen to that music right then in that point of time. Like, you really got to find the right music for your venue and, you know, and that's key to, like, having a great venue. And, um... It's uh, what, like the bright and then side. You can, then you could build a uh, star in yeah, your own venue. That's right. Yeah, You're great. Man. <laughs> yeah, come yeah. back next Friday. Like. Yeah, yeah. Well, the bright side in Brisbane have a similar sort of thing. Um, like they'll have a, a they, they'll have a great like sort of, oh, Indian hard rock sort of scene, and people just go there knowing that there's good bands. And um, it's just some venues they're very few and far between. But um, yeah, not enough venues sort of I'm care so what's going on. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually. I never go up there anymore. We're launching our um, second vinyl. Um, well, the vinyl will be released May 27, but we'll be getting to the bright side. That's our like last gig of the tour, um, June 10, Friday, June 10. And yeah, it's going. We got really good bands playing for us. Smoking Marfa, which are amazing. Um, the Valley. Uh, yeah, yeah, right in the back Valley. There, it's great. Um, the street. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's people just go there. It's um, I've played there once or twice, and it's just it's just oh, it's just got a. It's yeah. another great room. Sailor Jerry's posters and paintings all over the wall. I even think the bar is sponsored by Sailor Jerry's. So, like, you know, that that for one is a good indication, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it's good. Um, yeah, it's just everywhere, you know, we, we did an East Coast tour last time. And some pubs we we're not going back to. Some we've, you know, found we've slowly found, oh, apply for here. And, you know, so this tour should be better. We're going, yeah, we're going, we've got three gigs in Melbourne, one in Bendigo, one in Sydney, Toowoomba, Gold Coast and Brisbane, and then that'll that'll wrap us up. So yeah, um, well, back in the day, I used to do all the uh, bookings. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hard. Oh yeah, especially. So who does it? Is it you? Um, well, everyone, everyone has a bit of a go. This tour, I think, I booked all the dates for this tour except for some of the lineups. Um, I didn't arrange all the lineups, like because when when you book, when you go to a certain um, 
venue and say, you want to book this night, it's best to have everything on a plate for them. You know, here's us, here's what we're planning to do, and here's even the rest of the lineup. Because they don't want to say, oh, you don't have a lineup, like, you know, come back then and this and that. What do you mean lineup? Oh, like, as far as the other bands you're going to have on supporting oh, you that you, night. Oh, you bring the... Yeah, like, you'll, wow. you'll just message them and say, oh, we're thinking of doing this around this time here. Are you interested? You might get five bands that That's are interested. Great. And then, yeah, you just... So that way, when you approach the venue... You feel Wednesday it, nights and stuff like that too, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, well, it's just, when you approach the venue, everything's on, a, on right in front of them then. Like, they don't even have to think. They just got to go, okay, I'll note that in my diary and that their job's done. <laughs> you know? Then you take... Can I ask you, you take... You're taking the door. You know, yeah, the well, we you... um, every venue is different. Um, generally, it's we'll yeah we'll get the door sales and they'll supply the sound guy. They they supply the, the room and the sound guy and we'll get the door sales and basically divide it evenly between all the bands. Um, or but it, it's <clears throat> each venue is slightly different. Some of them will keep tab like they'll write you know oh, this band that band this band and as people go in they'll ask them or they'll ask. The, the punters, what band they've come to see, and they'll keep a tally. So if they know, you know, this band's only, um, you know, only, say, five people have come to see this band and, you know, 35 people have come to see that band, it's not necessarily having to dig at the band, but they got to kind of look at it. Well, obviously, this band's worked a bit harder, yeah. so then the, the band, then the venue will actually sort the, mon- the, sort the door money out, which I can understand, and it, it is a good way of doing it, but then, you know, you, you always kind of, like, want to have that attitude. Everything's equal, and that way there's no... You know, sort of attitude on the night. You know, it's all, it's just all nice yeah, and even. But yeah. then it's down to trusting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's plenty of dudes like what? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was like, what about that was Davo? That was, yeah, me. That was more yeah. than five, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> and um, so I mean, generally the venue is supplying a supply a door guy that will keep track of that, so that way. It is done fairly, and you don't have to think about it till the next week when they email you back and say, "Look, this is what's happened," and you're like, "Oh, cool!" And generally, everyone's happy, so um, it's it's pretty good. Um, I did, <clears throat> oh, for a few years there, we were just basically emailing promoters and um and getting on promoted gigs. So then a promoter will arrange everything and do do everything, which is really easy for uh, for a band that's not sure how to go about things, just slowly getting into the live scene. But um. And that's really good, but we've once we sort of started booking our own shows, um, it sort of feels a bit more like oh, an event, and so you therefore you anticipate it more, work harder for it to succeed, and so we I think we've just hosted our own shows ninety five percent of the time ever since our first one. Our former angel started oh maybe thirteen months ago, <laughs> just a bit over a year ago. And um our third gig was at the zoo in Brisbane and um like that's like a really cool venue in Brisbane, a huge venue. It holds four hundred and fifty people. And we for some re- for some stupid idea we're like, oh let's book a gig at the zoo and and for some crazy reason the zoo gave it to us. But we we worked hard and we, we created a lineup and every band got paid. The venue was happy. There was enough people there to make it worthwhile for the venue to give it to us. And that was I think like the first show we ever sort of hosted and we're like you know, like that was really fun. Like the, it, it sounds like work, but when you're doing it for yourself and your own enjoyment, it's all of a sudden just part of the gig. You know, and um, it like once we sort of did that zoo gig, like we we're just like, oh, we did it. It worked. We ma- we man, made do you money. Understand? <laughs> no one does that. Do you understand? Yeah, that? Well, very very few. Yeah, Who I do. Taught you that? Well, um, well, I think we. Oh, were, you, were you guys any in other bands? How old are you? Can I ask? Like. Oh, <laughs> you look, you, well, don't even answer it. <laughs> no. But you, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, no. I'd say you're 25 ish or something. Yeah, no, well, yeah. Don't even no. answer it. You're like <laughs> rock and roll. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, one rule um, I learned you can never tell your age. So, yeah, well, I think I was 16. <laughs> no, yeah, well, we, we were just, um, oh, we, we just sort of were playing these gigs for promoters all the time and we were just sort of playing the same venues and we are just sort of thinking, like, you'd see a band play the zoo or something because, like, the zoo's got a big stage and we have a crazy live show, lots of energy. And so when you're doing promoters gigs and you're crammed on this tiny little stage and you're running into each other and stuff, we're just like, oh, we'd love to play the zoo, you know. Like, we British India played there, Wolf Mother played there, you know, and we're like, how do we get there? And, like, one day we just like, oh, let's just email them, you know, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then they don't reply because it's a really bad email and then you, you send another one and they don't reply to that and you're like... All right, I got to really work out how to write this email, and you just got to tell them what you're doing and base wear your heart on your sleeve in the email, and just say, look, you know, this is our own show. We're going to arrange these are these these are some bands that we see working hard on the scene. They're not playing every weekend because that, like, for an original band, that can be bad. You know, you kind of need to build up hype for your shows, and um, you know, these guys play the scene well. They work hard at what they do. You know, I'm pretty sure these guys 
these guys usually bring 20 or 30 people every show. You know, we're going to have like three of these bands and us, you know, this is, this is us playing at the zoo. This is like, if we died the next day, we'd be happy. You know, we've we played the zoo, you know, and yeah. that's what you sort of think, you know, us, us 12 months ago, that's what we, that's what our attitudes were like. And so we're like, we're going to put everything into the show. We're going to book radio interviews and this and that, put up posters. And they gave it to us and, and it was a success. The zoo were like, yeah, that was great. And, um, yeah, so they made money. 